Next, we're going to look at how to add Cosmos DB to an Azure function. And I'm going to start off by creating a new resource group. I'm going to create a new one called uh, DAS Azure Funk 01 RG. I'm going to create that in East US. And then I will search for Cosmos DB. And I'm going to create a Cosmos DB account. And then the account's going to hold databases, and it's then the databases will hold containers where it will store data. But uh, before doing that, have to pick an API. Now, earlier saw how to use the Cosmos DB uh, for MongoDB, but this time I'm going to use the NoSQL API. So I'll create one of these. Recall that once you choose an API, you cannot change it later. And I will select the resource group that I just created. For the account, I'm going to call it DAS Azure Funk 01-CDB. I'm going to put it in East US. And this time I'm going to use serverless. Um, you can get provision throughput, which gives you a certain number of, gives you a certain amount of compute time that you're going to be billed for no matter what. It measures these things in what are called request units or RUs. And a request unit is basically the amount of computing power that it's going to take to read a one kilobyte item or document by its ID. And you're billed in 100 RU increments or 100 RUs per second. So if you have 400 RUs, you could read 400 of these one kilobyte items by ID per second. Now with serverless, which is what I'm going to use instead, you're only billed for what you use. And the rate of this, I believe, is I believe it's 25 cents per 1 million RUs. Now I'll review and create this. this is going to take a little while to create, so I will speed this up. And now that this is finished, I can click go to resource and I'm going to go into the data explorer. Like I said, the account will contain databases and the database will contain containers and the containers will contain the data. So there are no databases at this time. So I'm going to click on new container, which will allow me to create a database and new container at the same time. I'm going to create a new database and I'm going to call it Azure Funk 01 DB. The container ID is going to be coins. Now the partition key, I'm not going to go into this here, but like it says here for small workloads, the item ID is a suitable choice. And then that's all I need. And now you can see if this is finished that here's our database, here are the coins. There are no items yet, but there will be here in just a minute. All right. So I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio Code and I'm going to create a new function. So I'll go over to my Azure Blade, create function button. This time I'm going to click HTTP trigger again. I'm gonna call this one invest coin because we're going to store coins that we invest in the database. Anonymous for the authorization. And this time I'm going to need to get from the requirement or put into the requirements that text, the package needed to access Cosure, uh, Cosmos DB, which is Azure dash Cosmos. And then I'll do a pip install dash r requirements. All right, this one's going to actually be a get request uh, or a post request rather. So I'm going to remove get from the methods and function.json. And now what I need to do is I need to get two pieces of uh, data that are going to be used to authenticate a client inside of the init.py file. And that's going to be a key and an endpoint. 
And I can do these here from the command line. So these are a little bit lengthy, but it, I think it's a good idea to know how to do this. So, so using the Azure CLI, AZ Cosmos DB keys list, and then it's going to want the name of the Azure uh, or the, of the Cosmos DB account, which is going to be in this case DAS dash Azure dash Funk zero one dash CDB, and then the resource group, which is going to be DAS Azure Funk zero one dash RG. And then I'm going to query for a specific value. And this is going to come back as JSON. But so, so it could be kind of complex to do this, but this one's rather simple. It's just going to be double dash query primary master key. So it'll remove return rather only that value. And then finally I'm going to output it into a nice table format. All right, now I've blocked out the key because it technically is a password. And I'll also put this into a file that I can use to import it into the function. In production, you'd use an environment variable, but this will suffice for here. The other piece of information I need is the endpoint. And I can get this using a similar, uh, similar method. So az cosmos db show. And again, the name of the account, which is DAS Azure Funk 01 CDB. And then the resource group, which will be DAS Azure Funk 01 RG. And this time we will query for document endpoint. And finally, again, I'll put this in a table format. And this I'll also put in the keys function or the keys file. With that done, I can go into the init.py file and start to add, and start to add some code. First thing I'm going to need is I'm going to want to timestamp all of my investments. So I'll import date time. Also going to want to return uh, JSON from the function. And I'm going to want to give each investment a unique ID. So I will use UUID. And finally, I need to have my Azure Cosmos DB client. So that's going to be in the azure.cosmos module. And I'm going to import Cosmos client. And one last thing, I'll say uh, import keys. And that'll give me access to my endpoint and my key. So I'll create a new client, call it Cosmos Client. The URL will be the Cosmos endpoint, and then the credential will be the Cosmos key. Need to get an act, a reference to the database. So I'll do that with client dot get database client and then the name of the database which was azure funk 01 db and then a reference to the container from the database container if i can spell it correctly database dot get container client and then that's going to be coins all right inside of main i will again delete the boilerplate And this time I'm going to get the body of the request. However, we're going to, the request is going to have an application, or rather going to have a content type of application JSON. So I can just use request.getJSON. And this will parse this into a dictionary for me. Now I'm going to create the new coin that I'm investing in. I'm going to give it an ID. That's going, to turn, that's going to take a UUID or a GUID and turn it into a string. Then the coin ID, which is going to be in the body of the JSON request body. Dot get coin ID. Do the same thing with the amount.
And finally, the timestamp, which will be the current date time. And I'll use the, I'll format that into a string. With that, I can simply call create item on the container, pass it the new coin. And then I'll also return func HTTP response. I'll dump the new coin into a JSON string. Again, a MIME type of application slash JSON and a status code of 201 because the post should return, uh, according to REST, should return a 201 status code. All right, now I can call func or run func start again. Oh, and we've got an error here. What happened? It looks like I made an error here when I import. I should have. I wasn't paying attention. What I should do is I should say from dot keys import Cosmos endpoint and Cosmos key, and then do this live coding. Live coding is tough. All right, so let's see here. That should work now. Yeah, no more errors. Okay, now I can go into my rest book here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna test this out. So I'm gonna create a post request. It's going to go to here, grab this part of the URL, and then this is going to be invest coin. The content type is going to be application slash JSON, blank line, and then the JSON body, I want a coin ID of Bitcoin, not Sitcoin, Bitcoin. And then an amount, rather, amount of one. All right. And it comes back with a document that was inserted into Cosmos DB with an ID and a timestamp. So let's take a look inside of the Data Explorer and see what this looks like. So here is the Data Explorer, expand coins, items. There's the item that was just created, one Bitcoin. Let's do another one just for a sanity check here. So let's create one for Ethereum and 10 post. All right, we go back to the ID and the timestamp. We go back over to the Data Explorer and refresh. There's a new one for 10 Ethereum. All right, in the next video, we'll look at how to read the results.